Hey guys, short video this time. I'm getting over a terrible cold. Look at the cough drop in. Hopefully I don't cough during the video. So as you can see, I've been working on a new project. Got the Iron Man build going on and got some time lapses I can show you of some of these big prints. And the reason I'm showing you these big prints is that most of these prints take between two and three days each. So one of the things I find very important, oh, that thing's gonna be huge to wear. Uh, I find very important is my filament, okay? I'm not a fan of filament run out sensors. They can trip by accident, or I just don't like the fact that your print pauses while hopefully you're there to reload the filament and get things back up and going. Cause you don't want that cold joint. Now. One of my favorite things over the last year that I picked up is these filament dry boxes. Polybox is what they're called by Polymaker. And what's fantastic is, yeah, it does hold two one kilogram spools. That's fantastic. But here's the rub. I use large spools of filament like this PLA Colorfab. I'm sorry, this is Colorfab Economy, the PLA. And the rub I have is that, oh, cheeseburgers. It's not going to fit. What do I do? Well, thankfully, someone on Thingiverse came up with a clever solution to this problem. I'm gonna tell you about it and some other tips for printing big. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, I'm back. So first of all, if you've never seen me before, welcome to my channel. My name is Paul. This is where nerdy is cool. I'm big into 3D printing. I've got a full size aluminum R2D2. I've got a Batman suit, Stormtrooper suit. I've I got over 20 3D printers. I have a problem. If Betty Ford ever opens a wing for a 3D printer enthusiast, sign me up. So here's the rub. So I have this beautiful large spool of filament, but it won't fit. But over here, a gentleman by the name of B. Porter on Thingiverse came up with this great solution because basically we just have to rise it up another inch. So you can print it in two pieces or if you have a larger printer, he has a model that's a one-piecer. And what it does, as you can see here, let me get rid of my toys. So now we can fit that giant spool of filament in there. Now the poly box comes with two giant bags of desiccant so that with everything sealed up, this is doing the job of pulling the humidity and moisture out of the air, okay? Not the filament, because the only way you can get moisture out of filament is to actively heat it. That's when you'd want to use a filament dryer like a Print Dry Pro. So the other thing I like to add to this, this is not a salt and pepper shaker. This is Slice's new desiccant, and they have a nice paper on this if you want to read it on their website. And this thing does a very, very good job of even pulling in more moisture. Most of these things will take about a day or two to pull moisture down. This thing will take about an hour. It's pretty impressive. So the way that I have my printer set up is what I do is I have this set up on top of an enclosure. Now I know not everyone has enclosures. You just have your open printer. And then what I've done, what I've done, what I did is we all have these extra fittings here from our 3D printers. And wouldn't you know it, let me flip this guy around here. Now you can use these fittings, but they tend to pop out. So if I wanted to plug that guy in there, I have a better prop right here. This is an M6 wing nut, and that does a beautiful job of threading in here. So what you can do is by sealing this guy up, using that extra PTFE fitting you probably have laying around in a box somewhere, and with some Bowden tube, get that all the way down to your printer, or your printer's within the enclosure, inside the enclosure. Now, different materials pull in moisture at different rates. Now, everyone's gonna say, ah, oh, PLA, it prints fine, I leave it out. Well, you're right, PLA is. It's the additives. You don't know what's in that secret sauce. And I found that I have filament that's about six, seven years old that printed pretty terribly, but when I ran it through the dryer, no problem whatsoever. Now, other materials like PETG, PC, you know, co uh, copolyesters and others, 
they're all gonna have their own different rates of pulling in moisture into their filament. So what I like to do with these big multi-day prints, I wanna make sure that I'm not wasting material. So my suggestion, what I'm trying to teach my friends here, is that if you wanna do these really long prints or any prints to be successful, make sure you pay special attention to the way that you're handling the filament because if the filament is good and dry and not pulling in moisture and is in a very controlled environment, and if your printer is in a controlled environment, well, that's one less thing to worry about. Then you're just down to your slicer settings and things like that. So that's pretty much it for this video. I'll have links in the description if you're interested in the poly box or the slice desiccant or any of these other goodies I have on here. But what I wanted to do again was just point out that, hey, if you don't like relying on those big filament sensors uh, and you want to use large spools but you couldn't find a box or a way to feed that, try these guys out. And I didn't cough, this is great. If you're curious what I'm up to, check me out on social media. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I have all kinds of stuff going on down here, so definitely check it out. And that is it for this time. If you have any questions for me, hit me up in the comment section down below, and I would love it if you gave this video a like, and if you're not a subscriber, help me get there. I'm almost to 9,000. So that's it. Have yourself a good day, and remember, print safe.